members that have been identified in the cadre of the report for having violated the ethics code of parliament. And finally, on the market, rand is trading at 15 rand and 94 cents to the US dollar, 19 rand and 88 cents to pound sterling, 16 rand and 79 cents to the euro. On commodities, gold is trading at $1,808 and platinum at $946 per ounce, while Brent crude oil is at $112.46 a barrel. The top story this hour, the ANC will test condition of the former Johannesburg executive mayor and ANC regional treasurer Paul Moirani during a media briefing later this morning. For Radio 2000 News, I'm Evelyn Tongwani. Headlines at 7.30. Get it first on your mobile, on the web and on your dial. This is Radio 2000 Sport. Good morning. In your sport headlines, Liverpool takes the title race down to the wire and Novak Djokovic brace for Alcaraz and Nadal challenge at the French Open. The best breakfast show in the land continues after this. On air, online, and on your mobile, this is Radio 2000 Traffic. Good morning. Update on the uh, run from Shoshengubi to Pretoria for work in the central area. Three crashes and three queues. One on the Mopani Highway at XX, another on the Mopani Highway just past Theo Martins, and another on Eskia and Pathali just after Fun Hoff. A lot of traffic jamming en route leading Shoshengubi towards Pretoria CBD. Uh, the N1 this morning between Old Jebug Road and New Road looking a little bit busier for the summer morning than it normally does. Uh, Durban Samanzam Toti stays with one lane, so that's heavy. Big multi truck crash at Winterton exit on the N3 going north to Jebug. Uh, if you're driving between Escort and Funrena's Pass, expect some serious uh, queuing pressure out that way. And Cape Town, if you come out of Edgemead, it's another very busy morning with traffic lights down again. Bossman's Dam Road at the N7. Bossman's Dam, Edgemead, Freiburg are all under pressure. Uh, thank you so much, Rob. So, Utomisha Masha is in the building. Um, he just walked in. Uh, almost didn't recognize him, guys, because he lost so much weight. He <laughs> looks really good. He, does, he looks very, very good. And he's actually tall, because you know TV cheetah sometimes. Yeah. So, he really he is, tall. is tall. <laughs> Listen, if you want to watch the whole thing, okay, um, at Radio 2000 underscore ZA and all Instagram, Twitter, as well as uh, Facebook. Yeah. And then you can also catch it on the website. Yeah, at Radio 2000 underscore ZA on all the social media platforms. And the song that we are going to play now is a song that was requested by him, okay? He's going to explain himself when we come back. Feel it. This is good music. Feel good music. Radio 2000.
also been doing it. Um, good morning, sir. Good morning. Woo-hoo! Good morning, everyone. Good morning to the breakfast team. Good morning to the <laughs> listeners. It's, it's such a pleasure to be here, guys. You, you have no idea how much I love this radio station. Thank you so we much. We love you. Thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate you coming through. Um, we are also just huge fans of your work. Mm. Um, I appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's 13 minutes after 7 o'clock, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what's your normal daily routine? What are you normally doing around this time if you're not doing... First up, I try not to wake up this early unless <laughs> okay. I am going to be on set. Okay. Um, you know, I think that's why I, I chose this career, so I don't have mm. to wake up early. Right. <laughs> okay. But uh, my first thing that I usually do is uh, have a bit of breakfast, uh, go to the gym. Okay. Or, or skip breakfast and go to the gym, be gym fasted. Um, then do work, you know, like usually voices, um, some producing work, that sort of thing. That's okay. really that's really mostly my day. But if I'm on set, then that takes up everything. Set, you know, shooting a film is like you've given your life yes. to people. That's what they pay you for. Um, for your time, not for your action. Not for the yeah. action. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and also because it takes so long. It takes so long. It's like hurry up and wait. So you <laughs> get there, crack of dawn. Usually they pick you up at five in the morning, sure. sometimes even half past four, if we want to have a, a, a sunrise shot. Mm. Um, and then you're kind of there the whole day and you're just stuck there. Normally, when we start the show, we'll introduce the person on who it is. But you know, there's voices that you just recognize without nah, anything. Done. Um, <laughs> we've got a legend in the building, man. Multi award winning actor, voiceover artist, all round entertainer guy, also behind the cameras. And maybe we'll also add fitness onto <laughs> his ever growing. <laughs> but I thought the best way to actually start the conversation would be to play maybe this theme. Oh. oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Yeah, yeah. This is like the glory days. This is when we were still at the mine. Yo, you know yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is our childhood. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you, you won't believe how many people who are like early 30s or yeah. late 20s are like, I used to watch you as a kid. Yeah. And, and you're like, <laughs> what, wow. does okay, what does that make me? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Domitio, so, so, Domitio, so, so I mean, let's go back, right? Mm-hmm. Um, where, where are you born? Are you, are you, are you from... Are you from from Gauteng? Uh, yeah, I'm from Gauteng. I was born in Mamilodi. Okay. I grew up between Soshanguva and Harangua. Okay. Really. Um, spent most of my formative years in Pretoria. Okay. Um, after high school, went and did A levels in the UK. Came back, studied drama, and that's pretty much me. Uh, w- what is your upbringing? Are you from a privileged background? The reason I'm asking this because I'm thinking of the time to go and study tra- drama mm. in the UK. Yeah. What did your parents do? Uh, my <laughs> teachers, my <laughs> man, we're, we're barely having food. <laughs> my <laughs> melody, you okay? <laughs> yeah, 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 you oh, maybe yourself. he's an exile kid. Yeah, you know, exile no, no, not, not, all, not, all, not all. So, yeah. so um, I, I guess I was very fortunate that my parents, at the time, th- their, their, their struggle, like to how to get out of poverty, was get really educated. Okay. Yeah. Right? So obviously, when I was born, they were like on that trajectory. So I, you could say I was, I, we were poor at that time, you know, and then um, my dad obviously was educated and he was putting my mom through med school and then she became a doctor and like life just changed, just got better. Amazing. I'm not going to lie. You know? wow. um, so yeah, I, I, I was, I guess you could say privileged. Yeah, I was very yeah, fortunate yeah. that my parents saw the light and they were like, we got to put you in these private mm. schools early on. Yeah. So um that's how I grew up, you know, boarding school kid, just at private school. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I, I, in terms of your, your break, um, obviously we play the generations theme. For me, that's when as, as I took notice. I'm like, yo, yeah. there's something here and it's different. Yeah. You know, do you, when when do you think your break was That was, was definitely you? my break with Isidingo because I had been doing so many other small projects or smaller projects. And I guess, you know, I remember back in the day there, there, there really wasn't like streaming, there wasn't... DSTV like yeah. it is now. You ran to the TV at right? that time. It appointment. Was, it was an appointment a TV type thing. Yeah. So so certain shows were like everyone was watching that at that time. And I remember uh, I started on Isitingo as this character. But the story, let me give you a, a bit of a preamble. I used to, I, I went to so many auditions and they just I guess maybe I was not believable as a mind worker. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and you don't look it's like a twang. it. <laughs> it's a twang, bro. Uh, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, I joined the writing team. And I was like a junior writer. Basically, what we'd do is we'd come up with the story and the writers would Oh, you went on camera? Oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't on camera. So we'd like compile stories. Like, these are story nice. arcs. And this is how we think 
all that stuff should happen for this kind of character and blah blah and then one day like the producers were like but why don't we just create a story for you like create a character and so we created Jimmy Sani nice. yeah who was kind of this like this this privileged kid you yeah. know this cheese boy whatever. yeah yeah and I guess I, I suited that perfectly and that's <laughs> when I just took off and and, and and for me when we talk of fame mm-hmm. I think that's that was real fame yes um, yeah. you know when you compare that kind of fame because I find now because social media has almost distorted mm. the fame do you know what I mean? Everybody yeah, can have Everybody a fame. Is. Everyone thinks they're famous. Do you remember when you first tasted fame, what it was like back then? The first time you were like, yeah, actually, guys, I'm actually famous. People know who I am. I'm a big deal. And I can do things. Do you mm. remember? Do you remember where you were? Is there a specific thing that comes to your mind? Um, I think this is going to sound really silly, but I, pr- probably like when you realize like I'm a big deal. Yeah. If you're standing at a line in a club, you know? Yeah. And then they're like, no, come ah, to the front. Sh- and then they just open... And then you're about to you're pay like your money. And they're like, no, 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 no don't come worry, come in. So and, like, and then they put you on a table <laughs> behind, you know, the, the velvet rope. <laughs> and then and then you take it out your money, you want to pay. They're like, no, no, no it's all right. <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay. I could get used I've to this. Made I'm a big I've made it. I've made it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, congratulations. Thank you. Newlywed. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, it's One been year a year, now. right? Oh, mm-hmm. nice. That's incredible. Tell yeah. us about that journey because you took your time with it. Well, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I have mm. to say, um, you know, third time lucky. I'm getting married. For, I got married for the third time. Yeah. After, I'd suppose, two quite disastrous marriages. <laughs> and there was a lot of, <laughs> I guess there was a lot of growing up to do yeah. on my part as well, mm. you know. Um, and, I, and I think... Also, like the life that that we live is very difficult. You have to really sit down and be very real with yourself and say the the partner that I find has to really understand what I'm doing in this life, you know. And if you don't, then you're going to like stumble and and fail and fall and all sorts of things. So I guess I'm, I'm very fortunate. I can't take any credit for this. Um, it's a blessing from the Lord and I just got this amazing woman amazing Aww. human being and she's at the gym right and now she's listening to us hey you know. hey wifey <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like I suppose it's what I've learned is you gotta find someone who wants to be with you for you not yeah. not like all the other stuff not for the fame not for sure. um what you might put into their life, but what they might put into yours. And yeah. two people doing that. Divorce is, a, is an anomaly. Like, leaving is yeah. never easy. No, so no. many people will stay for 10 years. How did you say, I'm leaving? Twice. P- please hold on to that okay. answer, because it's such an important one. All right. I want to pay bills, and I want to come back. Okay, let's pay bills. I th- that's, I mean, even on Twitter, that's what a lot of people are asking. Like, moment. you left, and also, because you're famous, and mm-hmm. everyone knows. Yeah. 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 ShopRite's dropping the prices on these essential products, so you pay less on the things you need most. It's the ShopRite price drop. Swipe and save big on deals like 10 kilos golden cloud cake flour for only 99.99, save 30 rand, and 500 grams ripe brand macaroni or spaghetti for just 8.99 each, save 3 rand. Offers valid until 12 June. The ShopRite price, the price you can trust always. So the hashtag is 2 million gang gang or you can just write the whole name. The best breakfast show in the country. Okay, fine. You can also say the takeoff. We also <laughs> accept that. Um, we've got the legend in the building. Um, we've got Utumisan. I'm sorry. I can't <laughs> help myself. It's okay. I can't I help myself. Utumisan is a legend. Yeah, yeah. We've Utumisan got it. Like all these years later, right? Yeah. Um, so before we went to pay bills, I mean, Elona was asking such an important question. And, and, and I love how you said third time lucky. Mm. Um, you also obviously spoke about... Um, I guess the responsibility that you had to that you had to take on your side. Actually, maybe I also didn't do things right. So, how yeah. difficult was it to leave? And also, what sort of uh, looking into yourself did you have to do to be like, yo, guys, maybe I've also got a, a part to play here? I suppose, like, uh, like first first marriage, you're like, yeah, definitely, I was doing all the right things. Then you look back and you're like, okay, I could have improved there and there, right? Yeah, yeah. And then by the time you get to the second one, and it's like you're still having some of the same problems, you start thinking, maybe it is me. <laughs> maybe there's something about me. Because, yeah, that's the common denominator is me. And the only way to grow is by just saying, I've got to take some responsibility mm. for this, yeah. right? And I must say, I mean, w- with my second marriage, it wasn't a matter of I just woke up one day and I left. I had to literally be kicked out of there because I was like, I'm going to make this work no matter what, which is probably not a good thing. I must say, like, definitely make your marriage work. Like, yeah. do everything that you can. But when 
it a relationship is toxic and that's probably what the problem is we go into relationships they're toxic and we think maybe if i get married it will it will save the relationship yeah. and then that doesn't work and then you think maybe if i have a child with this person it will save the relationship and then that doesn't work and then eventually you're like okay it's clearly not working and it's a matter of almost like life and death and that's when you you, you decide to go so i would say even at relationship level look out for the red flags and yeah if certain things are not really gelling um common values um communication how you guys solve problems things like that at that point i think um you should be very honest with yourself and, yeah. and rather yeah. move on a uh, quick question yeah. on that note did you get any marriage counseling with your first two marriages yes i did actually okay. and, and I, I always say this like marriage counseling and, and it's like going to a therapist it's all good but it's about how you practice right yeah because you can you can go to a sure. doctor over and over again yeah. and the doctor can say stop eating carbs yeah. and and, and, go to the and gym. eating sugar and go to the gym and and you keep going to the doctor and they tell you that but you, you after you leave the doctor you you go and get a hamburger and a coke right and yep. every time like the doctors keep telling you the same thing and, and you keep eating those donuts yeah it's not the doctor's fault or, yeah. or, or the advice it's it's you mm -hmm. so i always say if you're gonna go and get advice use the advice but uh, but there's there's enough common sense stuff that we already have that i think a lot of the times we go into relationships and we just stop doing the common sense stuff it's like you know what? <laughs> like a hug and the a kiss. The small stuff. The small and stuff, uh, like 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 consistency yeah. and 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 forgiveness over and over again. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And also like not holding grudges or being resentful. Because what's the point, guys? You know, because uh, a, a lot of the times we hold like these grudges that after five years it's it's that you don't even know why you're angry yeah. anymore. And 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 every little thing makes you angry. And that's when like really the relationship is over. But if you learn to let go of like small things, you you clear you, can, you clear your inbox. Mm. It's like you can't just have emails piling up. The hashtag is two million gang gang. We've got uh, Tumi Shomasha in studio, and uh, a lot of people are saying, was he not the first black guy on top billing? <laughs> if I remember correctly, I, was the first I black think guy, he was. But I wasn't the first black person. Oh, yeah. Actually, Basi was the first black person after she won Miss South Africa. Yes, we're gonna talk and about. She that. was actually my boss at the time right yeah. mm -hmm. we're going to talk about top billing when we come back and just the pressure of being the first guy and having all the guys i guess because all of us wanted to be on the show right yeah. now you are the guy mm. yeah we'll talk about that when we come back <laughs>
Change. It's called the way it is. By the way, uh, Utumi Show actually selected the song, so everything that we are playing comes through. This, this is my music, okay? <laughs> uh, we'll be going through a couple of your voice notes as well on zero six zero five eight four double two five zero. All right, so. We all know that um, the people are up in arms because the Department of, of Sports, Arts and Culture plans on erecting a monument, which is the South African flag at, um, in, in Pretoria. Okay. And this particular monument will cost the South African taxpayer 5 million rand for the feasibili- feasibility study, okay. just the all feasibility right. study, right. and then 17 million rand will be allocated for the actual installation of this flag. So how much wow. together? So together it's 22 million rand. It will be erected at the Freedom Park in Pretoria. <laughs> and uh, my question to the kiddies, because we want the kiddies to mm. let us know what they think. Okay? So not so you, mom. Yeah. Mm. The kids, because because as adults, guys, we look at things very differently. Yes, we, we already sometimes think in corruption. And, whatever, and we get angry. Kids sometimes give us a very different perspective. Right? So if you're driving with your kids now, I know you're dropping them off at school at 8. This question is for your kid. Give the phone to the kid. Don't tell the kid what to say. Mm. Let the kid answer the question. Yeah, and we'll actually them. see how patriotic kids are. You see. Yeah. Look, I've got to say, if we wanted to, to, to create something that had social cohesion, we could have just made two movies with that. Do you know uh, what I mean? Really good, high quality, rent. high budget. As an adult. Films. As an adult. Maybe I should use my kitty voice. Maybe, you know. <laughs> and um, those an films adult. could have just spoken to <laughs> South Africans and about you know certain issues it, and it, all that stuff. And it could have been a movie about, the flag, movie because about the flag. Because the whole guys, guys, came guys, came Sorry, yeah, guys. You, you guys are adults. Okay, we don't want okay. to know what you guys think. All right. You want to know from the kids, okay? So, so the reason behind this is because the Department of Arts and Culture believes that people don't have enough knowledge about our monuments and about our key features of, you know, the South African uh, national flag. So what's particularly. the question for these So kids? the question is, make sure that, first of all, you record a very short voice note, <laughs> little kiddies, yeah. and answer the... Some things in life. Sorry, no, that was me. That was is me. the 22 million rand national flag monument necessary for the government to put up? And will you be going to Freedom Park to see it? Mm. That is the question, because this is now done for so what is the question? to improve so South African tourism. Do they think that 22 yes. million rand is necessary? Is it necessary will you be for going to the Freedom flag Park? monument that costs 22 million rand to be erected at Freedom Park? And will you be going to see it? Zero six zero five eight four double two five zero. Mom, Dad, not you, because you could already see the adults were getting upset. <laughs> <laughs> I was in my field. I was already of, like, my move. goodness, how do we spend all this money? And then <laughs> when you go to the department, they tell you they don't have any money because right? they spent it on the flag. Yeah. So give it all to right. the child, and we'll find out from the child will they be going to see it, and also do they agree with it, right? Yep. Zero six zero five eight four double two five zero. It is seven thirty news time with Evelyn Tongwan. SABC News, independent and impartial. Thank you. Good morning. In the headlines, the Public Servants Association, PSA, says its members are preparing for a strike which will start next week over a wage dispute with SARS. And the ANC will give an update on the latest condition of the former Johannesburg Executive Mayor and ANC Regional Treasurer Mpo Mwerani during a media briefing later this morning. And finally, the 19-year-old Stellenbosch University student who is an alleged victim of racism has confirmed laying charges of housebreaking malicious damage to property and criminal injuria against a fellow student. Next update at 8. Get it first on your mobile, on the web, and on your dial. This is Radio 2000 Sport. Good morning. In your sport, Binyam Jimmy made history as the first black African winner of the Grand Tour stage, but then had to go to hospital after an accident while celebrating. Eritrea's Jimmy beat Matteo van der Poel in a sprint for the line to win the stage 10 of the Giro d'Italia, but he missed the post-race news conference to go for a hospital checkup after hitting his left eye with a Prosecco cork on the podium. 
coming back to home to football, one of Orlando Pirates' strengths in the group stages and knockout phase of the CAF Confederations Cup, which has seen them reaching the final against RS Bikani of Morocco, has been the return of its internationals from injuries. Ghanaian international number one goalkeeper, the vastly experienced Richard Ofori, is one of those players, together with Bafana Bafana internationals. I can't help but want to say Ulach, Lach, Lach. Innocent Mayela and most recently Vincent Pule Ofori, who will be playing in his first ever cup final at this level is excited and says his family as well as some of his friends will be at the game unfortunately you and i probably can't be at the game but SABC has got you covered. Catch the final on SABC Sport on Friday at 9 o'clock. Internationally, though, Liverpool ensured the Premier League title race will go to the final day of the season as the understrength quadruple chasers survived a scare to beat Southampton 2-1 last night. After Liverpool defeated Chelsea on penalties in a grueling FA Cup final just three days earlier, Jurgen Klopp took a gamble with nine changes at St. Mary's. Despite if Effectively fielding a reserve team and trailing to Nathan Redmond's early strike, Liverpool hit back through goals from Takumi, Minamino and Joe Matip. The Reds are just one point behind leaders Manchester City, with both teams having one game left. A title race for the ages will go to City's way if they win against Aston Villa at the Etihad Stadium on Sunday. In golf news, John Ram has lamented the absence of defending champion Phil Mickelson at the US PGA Championship. Mickelson's victory at Kiwaya Island last year made him the oldest ever winner of a men's major championship. His two-shot victory over Brooks Kupka and Louis Ostazen coming just a month before his 51st birthday. Phil's got to do what Phil's got to do. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. I can't remember the last time a major champion didn't defend the title. Uh, but... He's got to do what's best for him. That's all I can say. Uh, I can't say it makes me unhappy. As long as what is he's doing what was best for him, I can't truly really say I'm, I'm not happy. Uh, I, would like, I would like to see him defend. I know he's played good here in the past, but uh, again, he's got to do what he's got to do. Well, number two won his seventh PGA title at the Mexico Open ahead of the PGA Championship. Inside the clubhouse at Southern Hills is a sign that proudly signals the heritage with the phrase, first to five. No other course has hosted the PGA Championship as many as five times. It's a major championship worthy golf course. It's as simple as that. Uh, you can't hide. You have to do everything well. And there's no surprise that the winning scores here have been as high as they have in the past and just a few people make it under par. I mean, they can they can truly make it as difficult as they want to be, or they want it to be. And they could also make it as easy as they want it to, to be, right? So they can really truly manipulate the score out here very, very easily, uh, even if the conditions are, you know, let's say the nine and we don't get too much wind. So yesterday I brought the coach that's coming to the DSTV Premiership, Bito Laza, right? And okay. And today, listen. Today, girl. <laughs> you guys don't understand. Today, I've got the Proteus captain, Tamba Bavuma, Alala. at 8.30 on Radio 2000. Listen, can I get a boo-boo-boo for a change? Can I be the one that gets a boo Thank you very much. It's, it's not the same if you don't say no, it. No, it's not the same. <laughs> Victoria West, we've got you covered. 97.6 FM. Feel good music.
HP. Uh, why this particular song? There's such a strong message. It's such a, it's such a strong message, man. It was always one of my favorite Jabba songs because it's like about how tough this life can be. But mm. he says, it's like, like, I'm holding mm. on to this life. No matter how tough the road may be, I'm hanging in there. And I always believed in this song. You know, it really inspired me when I was always low. And I, and I, I get sad because I was you like, Jabba, why don't you just listen to your own music? Because yes. we still need you, man. You know, but... Yeah, but we're still facing that pandemic of right. people not being able to hold on to Misho and yeah. and taking their own lives. What are we doing about it? I just think that uh, we need to, and it's a lot of m it's it's men yes. who mostly take their lives more than more than women. Yeah, I think it's that sense of at this point where I am right now, it's all over. And and I just mm. want to say, like, I want to take everyone back to like 2016 when mm. I thought, oh, my life is over. I'm going through so much turmoil. I'm, mm. my, my stuff is in the press, and I'm being accused of the most horrible things. I'm being cancelled. All sorts of things I could have taken in my life. But I just thought, hang on, I gotta I gotta get through this. It's just mm. a chapter in my life. Can you? Because I kept thinking, can you imagine the book or the? I think of my my life <laughs> as a movie. So I'm like, this is the chapter where the hero is I on the see. ship and there's a storm. You don't jump off the ship. You hang in there until the storm passes. So that's what I gotta say. Like, hang in there because the storm will pass and everything will be okay. See? And what you went through, you'll use as 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 like fodder for for mm. growth do you, do you ever, do you ever remember like your darkest days uh, I and, do, and, and i say this because when i when i speak sometimes you hear someone saying sometimes i don't even feel like waking up do you remember those plus you are famous yeah, yeah. and we know you so even going to the shop Eish. for you mm. is an issue because we've all got opinions a and we, how did you <laughs> build through that that whole thing um i remember it vividly because i was i decided i'm going to be in this moment i'm going to be present in this sure. moment i'm not going to try and and be somewhere else mentally or emotionally so i remember one morning waking up on a saturday going to buy food at woolies for breakfast and boom there's a saturday star and my pictures on the front page yeah. and i'm like okay this is awkward but i've got to read it and i'm taking it to the counter and i'm giving it to the cashier she looks at me i look at her she looks at me and I she look knows at her, that it's you and it's, she knows me she just like swipes it and then i give her my card and she like gives me that look and i'm like yeah and it i take this it is. <laughs> it is what it is <laughs> and no. i go and read this man and and it's like I think at that time it was like about a month of of mm. um, headline after headline. I'm thinking, can someone else do something crazy like right so, now so, so that I can so be the heat? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what is Zuma, when is Zuma gonna do something <laughs> crazy? And right. he didn't do anything crazy. And give me a break. The money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Two shows that you were part of. Speaking of this, the, the death of things. Isidu mm. and Top Billing are no longer on TV. Mm. Yeah. What do you make of that? Is it a sign of something that has been happening in the industry? No, I think n mm. nothing can last forever. Mm. It would be awkward. And I think also um, Top Billing as a show was a great show for the time when everything was great economically in South Africa and we had a lot of hope. I think right now, especially with, with Instagram and social media, yes. it would seem like it's just about flossing. Mm. Remember, at the time, top billing wasn't just about flossing. It was about aspiration. aspiration. It was about motivation, mm. inspiration. We're showing you beautiful things. This is what you can achieve. And we're bringing on young interior decorators. Mm. We're bringing on designers. Architects we're bringing on and architects yeah. and all sorts of people. And we're showing people from different backgrounds who are doing these yeah, things. Yeah. I think right now, it, it might not work so well. So um, certain shows just, just have to like evolve or die. And even a show like Isitingo, I guess... Uh, it was. It would have been very hard to maintain right now because no one goes home at a certain time and watches a show yeah. at a certain time. Things we watch changed. everything on catch up. We watch everything when we want to. So um, I guess anyone who's in broadcasting, uh, film and television especially, has to understand that you have to try and man keep up with the times mm -hmm. as much as you can't do everything just because it's new, mm -hmm. but you have to I be aware you. of, of trends. So listen, we're going to be going through your voice notes. There are so many, yo, because time's going to run out. Let's find out what's going on in Trap Code Drop Burn and come back with my voice notes then. On air, online, and on your mobile. This is Radio 2000 Traffic. Good morning, still slow, leaving Shoshengube uh, into Pretoria, two crash scenes near XX causing that backlog. Uh, also very slow on the M1 through Century and mid-round queuing between John Foster and Ollie Fontaine this morning, uh, noticeably slower than normal. Also a stationary truck inside the Baclou interchange, so the M1 through Allendale uh, linking through Baclou on the uh, way to the M1 towards Ravonia, if you like, very heavy backlogs there. Uh, Durban's end, two of the months on Toti remains out of one lane, that stays heavy. Uh, there's some real queuing pressure as well around that Amshlali River Bridge north of uh, Durban on that section of the end two, and a big 
truck crash at Winterton. So uh, north of Escort, there is quite a backlog of traffic waiting to get through. That said, uh, Cape Town Marine Drive from Bayside down to Racecourse Road is busy. No traffic lights on Bosman's Down Road at the N7. Uh, fairly heavy backlogs out of the Edgemead and uh, Bortasak areas towards the N7 and Suffolk Greens area. So we're going to be going through a couple of your voice notes uh, on 0605 And I'll try and play as many as we possibly can because there are just so many. Okay, so here is one. Hi, guys. Oh, I mean, I'm struggling to differentiate the voices between Tumisho and Nobongani. <laughs> Otherwise, it's nice having you, uh, Tumisho. Pom, 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 pom. Momota. Pom, pom, pom. I'll take the compliment. Good morning, Buffetto. I just want to say to me, so I love your work, bro. I've been watching you since I was a small boy myself. And most importantly, I like the relationship you have with your father. You know, I once listened to you being interviewed at some radio station. You know, I love the connection. Even though I grew up without a father, you are the ones that teaches guys like us who grew up without fathers to be good fathers you know you are a good father i know you are a good father despite your divorce and whatnot bro i love you i love your work you are one of the guys there are very few guys that i wish to spend a day with you are one of those and the other one is right in front of you don't go away to this is tab of it so all the way from Ganana okni hola Hi guys, um, my name's Asanda. Uh, currently residing in Johannesburg, again, but I'm from Caves Den. Uh, I know from a very young age, like before I even knew what I was, I guess. Um, so as far as I know, he dated my mother, and I'm not sure if it was that great, whatever. But I was a really, really young, young gun. Um, but I remember like him specifically, and like I've spent like almost my entire life just knowing that hey, once upon a time there was a time where he was um, my dad. Him and mom were like, together, but it's irrelevant. The point is, <laughs> it's like such a joy to oh, have yeah. watched his career grow throughout. I uh, really am impressed as a as a budding lesbian myself i look up and i and you know i'm totally inspired so i just wanted to send a shout out say what's up um hope you're good and thank you so much to the team man lovely show i listen to you guys literally every day um and it's just the morning show after that like i yeah but um thank you guys so much thank you now you remember i yeah. have to i have to Actually. stop the voice notes <laughs> so this guy is saying you and his mother uh, hmm? we're we're busy um, you know, it was, it was a long time ago. I was young. <laughs> Mama! Uh, Mama! Great lady. It just didn't work out, you know. I'm sorry. Um, it was me. It was me. I'll take the blame. Like on I'll take the me. hit. I'll take the hit. You know, I was, I was, I was still like, yeah. Da, 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 da. I was wild, you know. And, and, and it took a long time, though, to get the wild around. out of me. It took a long time. And well, you know, I think more than anything else, it was, it was the party life. I have to yeah. say. <laughs> Even my sisters and, and my younger siblings are like, oh, you party till you were in your 40s. I'm yeah. like, yeah, okay, I know. <laughs> but I, I've i changed now, you know, yeah. I've changed. Thank, thank God. And you're taken. Yeah, uh, and I'm taken. <laughs> Look, I mean, l l let's speak to how you've obviously evolved. Besides losing mm. the weight, um, yeah. you are working on brand new projects now. How have you found your way in this new entertainment with mm. social media, um, with the new stars that are coming yeah. out of social media? How have you found your way? And also, what are you working on right now? Okay, so I think the, the, the thing is, don't compete with the new stars because yeah. it's not a competition, guys. We're all in it together, yeah. actually, at the end of the day. And also, like, learn how to use social media for your own career, right? Because yeah. it's a great tool. It's something that we never had when I was on Isitingo or Top Billing. You had to wait for a newspaper or a magazine to want to do an article on you. Now you can talk to the people directly. Yeah. So how I found my way is also being a content creator. Um, I've, I've realized that there's a lot of content that needs to be out there and there's just not enough of us who are creating the content. So hence, I'm moving more into the production space and it's something that I've been working on for a long, long time. And it's always tough because it's about funding, right? Yeah. And it's about someone believing enough in your project and very fortunate that we produced a film, self-funded, because of how difficult it is to get funding and it's now on Amazon Prime Video, Ooh. the yeah. domestic, Woo. streaming live. Woo. You yeah. know, go and watch it. It's it's a beautiful story and starring that, Tuli Tabete and Amanda DuPont. And I guess that's why it's so upsetting when you hear the figures of around 22 million rand being thrown around at flags. Mm. 
yeah, especially it, it from is, the arts and culture it is department. upsetting because the arts and culture department never has money for us as filmmakers right yeah. um or if although they they'll do, say they distributed to the national film and video foundation and gauteng film project yeah you know i could i could talk for three hours or more on that because even there it's like as producers you're expected to come with a very low budget so before yeah. you even get out the gates you yeah. have to be asking people can you do this for a lot less than yes. what you would usually work for so you're begging people to work for nothing and we've got this culture of mm. always continually undermining the people who work in in our industries whether it's actors or it's crew and you know yes. i think at the end of the day if the money's there let's spend it and also let's let's S- let's make more movies because it's important to make films and television that represent us and yeah. let's make good yeah. quality yeah. ones i don't yeah. want to see low budget stuff and i mean looking at projects that you've worked on with big dogs like mm. your silverton siege yeah. with netflix mm. H- how what have you learned from working with companies like netflix because there you have trailers you know when yeah. you're an actor yeah. things yeah. are yeah. a pro yeah yeah what i've learned is is that they understand that you've got to spend money to make money mm. so something like silverton siege cost a lot of money and Netflix is smart enough to go, it's a great story. Sure. Why not make it? They recognize the story first. Whereas everyone else, even the NFVF, a lot of the times it's about filling out long forms mm. and you, you, you tick the right the boxes versus the actual story, yeah. right? So Netflix is like, we're going to put money into this because the story is amazing. And then the talent is amazing too. So th- unlike what we used to do um, about 10 years ago where they say ah we've got the money but it's american money so we have to have an american star everything has changed now they're going yes. well there is talent in south africa let's mm, use the talent so we've you. got guys like tabo rameti mm-hmm. who is starring in, in, in silverton siege and you can see he's like star material yeah. um we've got uh, uh um nox yeah. who who was playing tara in the movie as well and she's amazing so mm. you, you you know stephanie rasmus you got all these guys um michelle mosella guy who are young and upcoming, but they're amazing. And they're, they're give, being given a chance. And even the people who've been around for a long time, yeah. Bonin Buli, Tony Koroche, to name so many people who are amazing so actors mm. who should be given leading roles. Yes. And, they and are paid being, for and it. And paid for it. And they are getting those from, and it's sad that it has to be from international companies because yeah. yeah. our people don't believe in us. So speaking of productions, there's a, an Instagram DM that says, Unazo, he says he's worked with you on Mandela's Gun. Yeah. And he's just speaking about how good and humble of a human being you were to be around um, and he says it's not it was not hard to be around you like others that we cannot name <laughs> and then on Twitter <laughs> Bukhosi Royal says I saw your video in Hamasha Limpopo dancing it seems uh. you were connecting with your hood in Sikukune land proud of you brother thank you yeah, <laughs> you should I w- see to Mishra dance I was back in the village I had to do that you know I had to do, do in the village dance it's, there's it's crazy. also a uh, voice notes that have come through take a listen to this one Hey, two million gang gang. Um, you know, I swear to you, before I heard who is um, who is in the studio, um, I I thought it was Andy Lenyobe. They have such the same voice, and you know the accent and the pronunciations. You know, it's it's so it's so great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dumisho, thank you so much. You blessed us, our, our TVs. I mean, when I was growing up, yes, <laughs> this guy. Oh man, I'm glad you you're still on and you know doing things. Thank you. Thank you. But you're turning like him now as well, eh? Yeah. Listen, girl. <laughs> and they Hi say guys, you have a voice Demi for radio. Shado. I love you so much, guys. Thank you for bringing him in the studio. I love you so much. Yo, I don't know how to explain it. The way he acts. Yo, 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 yo. Thank you, guys. Big ups to you. Bye. Yo, 2 million gang gang. What up, what up? It's Boo here from Pretoria. Um, Brad Dumisho, Brad Dumbona, I get happy story, and I've always been a fan of your work since Kellen Barn as a kid, mm. especially the channel O stuff that you did. Mara, one thing I've always wanted to ask you, man. Truth, truth. Why not like a cheese boy, man? You grew up with a cheese boy. You've always had that swear, the confidence out of it's king. Truth, truth. Like a cheese boy, it's like I think. So I just wanted to know your confidence. How did you manage to, like, just keep that going? Because it wasn't fate, it was just the way Ole. So how did you manage to always keep that swag, that coolness about you? Thank you, man. Good question. Hi guys, Timmy K from Cafe Station. No, I'd, I'd love to answer that. I'd love to. I wanna. I want to go pitori. Go hold it to die. Go hold it to go mamilori. Go go shangu. Go rangua. And 
Bernay Ruhola, come at the Tiala Kale Kale. Okrova to Casonta, you know, we all get dressed up, you go do your hair, and then Ono oh Ono oh shop around the Mokasi. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And it was all about that. It wasn't like um, we're competing or anything. It was just like everyone has a chance, and it was still safe to do yeah. that, you know? So, yeah, no, growing up in Pretoria gave me that sense of confidence and that swag because you just had to appear and arrive yeah. as yourself and be the guy and be the guy yeah and and, and there's another question around uh, obviously top billing i mean you mm. were the first black male to be on camera for top billing if i yeah. remember correctly yeah, I was. what was that i can imagine the pressure that came with that there was a lot of pressure because like first of all everyone's looking at you um are you are you up to the task and i was very mm. fortunate that i'd had a theater background so learning lines and then just reciting them was something that i can do um, and I'd done, I suppose, Shakespeare. So all yeah. the big words I could do, you know. Yeah. Um, and I just felt that I had to represent my people more than anything else. Because I had to show that actually black people, you are able to be in this space. Done. And, and be okay in this and space. And still be black. And it. still be black. So yeah. what I wanted to do was, was be that guy from Kokasi, I suppose, who I suppose spoke well or whatever. Yeah. And could, could live in that world, but still represented people by Kokasi in a way. Uh, there actually is never enough time. No, um, there is never. Yeah, but I do want to know what is your next move. Oh, my next move. Check me. <laughs> um, definitely producing a film. Yeah. Another film. Nice. Um, and and just continuing uh, as it were with my acting career. My next move is doing an action movie. I want to be an action hero now. That's amazing. I'm ready for that. I'm ready to skopski ten dollars. Yes. <laughs> now with everything social media. Where do we find you on social media to follow movies, to follow all the things that you do? Yeah, at Demi Show. Masha, um, for Twitter, for Instagram, for Facebook, it's just my name and surname. Thank you so much for joining us. Ah, thank um, you so much. I just want to give a shout out to my father-in-law, who I know is listening to this. Aww. He's a big Radio 2000 Aww. fan as well. Hello, father-in-law. Hello, He's Mama. such a cool guy. Hello. Claude. You can call him Uncle Claude. Hello, Uncle Hello, Claude. Hello, Uncle Claude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much, man. We really uh, loved having you this morning. Uh, thanks so much, guys. It was such a pleasure to be here with you. It's so you cool, are cool to Thank see you, you face to face. By the way, I have your birthday that comes on my phone every year. Like, I don't really? know how you sent me your birthday, <laughs> but every year I know it's Dimitri's birthday. Send money, man. <laughs> you wallet, Diana. <laughs> you know I mean, come on. <laughs>